Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our KA-50 Black Shark and we're looking at the autopilot modes and flying in conjunction with the various autopilot modes. So we've done a video already about the basic flight, takeoff, flight and landing. And that was with using the autopilot modes in a default position and without the flight director on. So now we're going to look at using or explaining the different functions and the flight director and then the in route mode. Here is the autopilot panel. We've got pitch hold here, bank hold and heading hold. These three here are on as default and they are there to essentially reduce the workload of the driver. These autopilot systems here only have up to 20% control of the chopper in terms of collective and pitch input. So you have to work with these autopilot modes for them to function correctly. And let's take it for instance. Um, if I'm going to use my altitude hold here and I want it to hold an altitude of say 500 meters, I have to have my collective within 20% of the required amount to hold that altitude for the autopilot to be able to work. So if I asked it to hold my altitude of 500 meters, but my collective was in the full position there, it wouldn't be able to do it because it could only remove 20% of that collective. And the same if I've got too little collective. And that's essentially how all of these autopilot modes work. So it's important to understand that and to show how you have to work with them. Now, like I said, these three are on as default and you'll never really want to take them off. Uh, any reason why you think you'd ever want to take them off, Star? Uh, it's because they also provide stabilization systems or, you know, like bumping systems for your aircraft. Exactly. So if you took them off, it's just going to get really difficult to fly. So as a rule of thumb, keep them on. So needless to say, pitch hold dampens and holds your pitch. Bank hold dampens and holds your bank. Heading dampens and holds your your heading and you'll see these three in play on the previous video that we did. Next there's altitude hold which is optional. You can have it on where it's darker like that or you can have it off where it's light like that. And this as it says is going to try and hold your altitude. Now you can have it hold your radio out altitude or your barometric and you can change that with a switch here. So if I want to change it with my barometric altitude there, my radar there. There's a reason why we want to, might want to use radar over barometric is if we had undulating terrain and we were cruising over that undulating terrain and we were trying to hold say 100 meters if we have altitude hold on and the radio mode then it will follow the undulations of the terrain and stay 100 miles as long as they're not too violent if it's a you know, steep mountain it'll just crash into them because remember it only has 20 percent control of your input also it obviously needs a little bit to uh, a little bit of time to react and a steep mountain is gonna raise the your height over the ground very quickly or lower it. Hey firm. But if you were in 100 meters barometric above that terrain, then it would just fly straight and level because obviously it's a barometric hole. Next is the flight director. By turning that on, it gives you much more free control of the aircraft. Essentially what it's doing is bypassing a lot of work that these three autopilots are doing. It just uh, keeps your autopilots from interfering with your controls and only leaves the dampening system. So in the previous video did, we did not show the flight director. So to maneuver about freely, what we were having to do is press and hold the trimmer to allow our aircraft to move, to take away the restrictions of the various autopilots. Having flight director on, it's very similar to pressing and holding the trimmer button. It's overriding a lot of that other autopilot function and giving you good free control of the aircraft. There is still background dampening work being done, but in terms of control of the chopper, it gives you f much more free control. So if we were in a dynamic situation where we were having to fly the plane um, to, I don't know, avoid obstacles and roll left and right a lot and not, we don't want to worry about using the trimmer button, then we would just put flight director on to take that free control. And the other autopilot mode that we'd like to mention is in route mode. So in route mode is going to automatically point steer our aircraft towards a point of interest, towards a waypoint. And we'll look at that in a bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off. We're going to have a little fly with flight director on. We're going to have a little fly with altitude hold on. Then we'll probably land again. Then we'll show you that we've got a waypoint set up and we'll use our in route mode to navigate to that waypoint automatically. Since there are two major navigation systems in the K50, the Abris and the PVI 800, uh, it's only the PVI that can actually uh, interact with the autopilot systems and use the in route mode. The Abris is purely visual aid. Right, so I've my, reset my trim here. You can see my controls on the left cyclic, rudder, and uh, collective. So we're going to go up with flight director on from the start here. We're going to retrim the chopper as we always do for takeoff. Trim it about there. We're just going to do a bit of general flight. Up we go. 
And the first thing is you can see if I rudder to the right like that, there's no uh, your, if you like, your autopilot trying to turn me back. It just lets me, I'm not having to push the trim button, it lets me point the aircraft where, wherever I want. And that's a big point I tried to make in the previous, previous video. I can roll, I can spin about, nothing's trying to stop me doing anything. I can go forwards, I'm not having to press the trimmer at all. Like we said, it's a bit like using flight without flight director mode, but constantly holding the trim button down. And I've got complete free control of the bird now. I can do anything I want, anytime, as long as I don't overspeed or pitch up too high. But often use that um, either if I want to land with a lot of main control or uh, engaging targets with rockets and Yeah, where you need full control. You don't want to be messing around with the trimmer buttons and stuff like that. Uh, one thing to point out is that the flight director is mutually exclusive to other autopilot options so you can't for instance use the flight director and autopilot hold they are you know they're the complete opposite one's giving you free control and one's taking control you can't use the flight director and in route mode one's taking control one's giving you control next we're going to look at altitude hold so this is not hover this is just altitude hold so i'm going to turn my flight director off now and immediately look look i'm not touching the stick at the moment the the, the aircraft's trying to do things for me it's trying to take control again um, we're going to put altitude hold on. I guess we can just do it here at this 20 meters. So first thing to say for altitude hold to work You need to have roughly the right amount of collective in to hold the altitude There's no way to really quantify it other than to say it needs to be within 20% But that's all I can tell you next turn it on now. It's going to try and hold us at our altitude again We control radio or barometric altitude here if you want to know the difference between those two I've got a video about that in the uh, educational general section and it, so it's you see it's bang on it's already done it at 32 percent uh, 32 meters but what if i've got too much collective for it to hold well i'm going to pump up the collective now it's now too much it, it's 20 percent that is allowed to control it can't get our plane down low enough so that's how i'm overriding and i'm right in saying you can override all of these autopilot controls like that can't you star Everything, yeah. Autopilots will never take complete control of you. Yeah. Now, don't. It hasn't completely given up. Look, it's trying to do its work still, but um, but it just can't do so. So it's still turned on. And if I turn my collective down um, to a sensible rate, it will start controlling my altitude again. But that's that. Anything you want to add to the uh, altitude hold style? Two little things. First of all, the altitude it's trying to hold is always uh, the altitude when you engaged it. So if you're currently ascending or descending, it will then you know still take a little bit to get back to the altitude uh, you had when you press the button and the other thing is you can adjust uh, the altitude of the altitude hold by using the collective brake so by default that is the F button on the keyboard uh, you can obviously also bind it to something else um, that will kind of work uh, like the trimmer but just for the for the um, altitude hold so if you hold that the altitude hold, hold even when it's still on will be overridden for a little bit you can then change the altitude let go of the collective brake and it will save the new altitude. You could also do it by just um, forcing it to change the altitude by overriding it with the collective, lowering it or raising it too much and then just uh, pressing the button. Next we're going to look at the in-route mode. So first of all I have to show you that we've got a navigation point of interest, a waypoint selected. If I look down at my PVA 800, I've got waypoint 1 selected. I've already typed in the coordinates and I can show you where it is on the map. We are around here somewhere and my waypoint is there on that Fiddly little island. And I don't want to drive there myself because I'm a lazy man. I want my autopilot to do it for me. Uh, so we're going to use our in route mode. So the first thing I want to do is get into uh, just a basic flight. I'm not going to fly towards the island. I just want to get some speed up and get myself trimmed for general transit. I've got autopilot hold off, flight director off for the moment. So just let me get some speed in the bird. And I'm going to trim her out nice and level in terms of, um, in terms of attitude, in terms of roll and whatnot. So that's trimmed, we're heading that way, 90 knots, uh, 90 clicks per hour, whatever. Next we're going to use our in-route mode. I've got to quickly jump into trust controls. Just to show earlier, the trim button is that. And the route mode here is by default the R key. So I'm going to press R now. Boom, and we're now in route, in route mode. It's now taking us along our route to that selected island. So it's taking control of our roll and our pitch at the moment. You can see we've got this extra uh, chap here at the top left of the HUD. Do you want to describe, explain that, Shal? The deviance? Uh, yeah, this is uh, commanded speed indicator, so it's going to tell you whether you're flying too fast or too slow. 
So out of interest, we've got our diamond here, which is telling us where our waypoint one is. You can see it's pointing us directly towards it. Now notice our altitude is going up. Um, on route mode, route mode has no interest of our altitude at the moment. So I want to hold that. So I'm going to press hold. And radar's fine, or radio's fine. And so it's now going to hold my altitude as long as it can within its 20 degrees of, of uh, sorry, its 20% limit at 582 or 580. And that's it. And it's going to take us all the way to that island. And, uh, and that's it. That's that's where our waypoint chain ends. Anything you want to add to route? Well, I mean, there is uh, some additional functionality that we should probably talk about. Oh, um, yeah. So underneath the flight director switch, there's a DH and DT switch, which stands for the uh, side heading and the side track. Um, you can use that to either have the autopilot fly you directly towards the waypoint you've currently selected, or to fly you along the track of your last waypoint to your next waypoint. So, to uh, note that that only works uh, if you actually have a uh, flight plan in your PVI 800. So there's a little bit of a difference between just inputting waypoints into PVI 800 and actually having a flight plan. Uh, you can, with some additional functionality of the PVI 800, connect single waypoints in a certain order to create a flight plan and it will then actually jump from point to point as you get close to them and the in route mode can also fly an entire route for you if you feel like it. Roger, and out of interest, we've got a, nav uh, a full navigation video on this where we show that jumping through a chain of, uh, a chain of waypoints with uh, route mode. Uh, note that to have the route mode working, you cannot have flight director on. Again, for reasons said before, they're mutually exclusive. You can have altitude hold on, and like we said earlier, you'll have all the these three chaps on anyway. Okay. And we'll actually need those three on lot of it's not going to work. Absolutely, yeah, because that's how it's taking control of the bird, isn't it? Just out of interest, Charles, um, and for everyone watching, if I was going in for a landing, would you use your flight director or your non-flight director for landing? Well, you obviously want to turn off everything like altitude hold and in route mode. You can do it with either flight director on or off. Um, generally speaking, I like to just take control of the aircraft when I'm landing, so I tend to do it on with flight director. I'd agree with that, and the reason for me would be if we didn't have flight director mode on, we'd have to constantly be trimming the plane. We'd, at the very least, we'd have to be holding, pressing and holding the trim button all, for more or less all of the time of landing, which is a pain. No one wants to do that. So, yeah, a flight direct in landing sounds like the most suitable way of landing. One thing to point out, the star just reminded me, is that when we get to the end of this waypoint, because we don't have a flight plan set up in the PVA 800, PVI 800, like Star said, once it gets to this waypoint one it, and gets to it, it's not going to know what to do. So it's just going to keep flying after that straight and level until it runs out of fuel or until you turn the on route mode off. You can also use the in route mode, by the way, to just fly towards a heading that you have trimmed. So if you're not using any waypoints in the PVI 800, you can actually use that. Okay, so it can also act as like a trimmer hold or trimmer azimuth hold. Okay, basically, yeah. So it's that's actually what it's going to switch to. If you're if you're um, at your waypoint, it's just going to turn the waypoint off, and it's just just going to, you know, fly towards your desired uh, direction. Hey, fair. Um This can also be used, by the way, for uh, bombing in the KA-15, but we have already covered that in a yeah, separate video. we'll cover that in a separate video. Lovely. So that's our flight modes covered, uh, sorry, our autopilot modes covered, how it affects our flight, how we work with them, other than against them. I hope that helps, and see you later.